Um, my name is Jackie Wright, and I am not a homeowner, but I am a renter. And in the last uh, two years, the homes that I've lived in uh, have been uh, foreclosed on by Wells Fargo Bank. You know, I was sitting here, and I was thinking, would I say anything or not? And you must excuse me, but I'm very emotional right now as I look at the people that are in this room, mostly over 55, that have been affected by this crisis. And you know, I, I just wonder, what it, does it take to move someone who has not been affected by this crisis? Um, they haven't um, come home to find them locked, themselves locked out of their doors. They haven't uh, found out that they've been deceived by uh, one banker saying, oh, we'll work with you, we'll accept this short sale in the case of my family home, of my sister's home that I was living in, and then have the house auctioned off. You know, just the reality of what that goes through, how it affects the children, uh, the emotions of, are any day now are you going to have to go? And for me, it is very painful because I think about the fact when I was 10 years old, on March 9th, 1964, my father died in Vietnam for the American way. And six years later, my mother, on March 9th, 1970, died. I'm the oldest of four children, and I raised two of my three siblings. I worked my way through the University of Georgia, of all places, with my elementary school-age daughter and my teenage sister, working my way through. I'm a three-time Associated Press award-winning journalist. I've worked 10 years or more for the American Red Cross. I worked for San Francisco Unified School District, establishing an award-winning communications department for that, that uh, school district at the time in 2001 to 2003. So I am familiar with, as a former in, employee, I'm familiar with this board. And I say all of that um, not to aggrandize myself in any way, but to say, if somebody like me, doing all the right things, uh, has runs into the difficulty of what the foreclosure crisis has done, well, how does it affect other people? So I'm saying to you, there's more than meets the eye with this. I can talk to you about statistics of about there for uh, Wells Fargo Bank because there was a recent report from ACE that says over 11,600 homes are in the pipeline for foreclosures and if they are foreclosed on that there is going to be 3.3 billion dollars in lost property values. This is for a bank that had made 19 billion dollars in profits last year. I just say to you, uh, very esteemed people who are making these decisions here, to consider that there might be a little bit more than what you're seeing here, and for you to at least put this on your agenda for there to be some discussion, because this has impacted the American people in their psyches, in their physical being, in terms of sicknesses, and all sorts of things in ways that you can imagine. We just recently said, liberty and justice for all. But as you oh. look at the documentation <coughs> that is on the internet of the various things that the banks have done, and just looking at Wells Fargo that received the assets of Wachovia, Wachovia, which acknowledged that it had slave ties, and Wachovia that also acknowledged that it had Drug laundering, drug laundering ties. When you look at that, and then you look at that 170 billion dollar million dollar, it should have been billion, but 107 million dollar um, amount that Wells Fargo uh, settled on. You gotta know that something in the milk's not clean. Something is wrong. So we're asking for a humanitarian solution, and by your making a decision about where your money is going to lie, it's going to send a signal to them that maybe what we can do is rework some loans and modify these loans so Americans can stay in their homes 
and not be further uh, harmed by everything that's happened. I ask that you take a look at what's happening in San Francisco, look at those statistics, look at the numbers, but also look at the hearts of the people and what's going on here. We can do better in America than what's happening. There's too much money that we can't figure out a way to maybe not make as, as much money or make money in a more, a more uh, humanitarian way so that people can be in their homes and they can have an inheritance for their children. My father did not die in Vietnam representing uh, McNamara at the time as an honor guard. Wiley Wright Jr., Specialist 5 Wiley Wright Jr., did not die for this kind of America. And I just want to go on record of saying that. And what does that have to do with all of this? It goes deep. Because all of this affects our hearts and our minds. And for me, a little 10-year-old girl that was proud of my father, as a 16-gun salute went over his casket and the airplanes flew over, I know it was not for this moment in time that I would be emotionally upset because of my fellow Americans, many of them older Americans, would be put out of their homes. That's not what my dad died for. And I'm putting that on the record right now. Thank you.